Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 5 of topic 11, Organic Chemistry. Remember, we learned previously that alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons, meaning they only have single covalent bonds between carbon atoms. They are hydrocarbons, so they contain only carbon and hydrogen. These bonds are strong, making alkanes generally unreactive under normal conditions. However, they do react in combustion reactions and in substitution reactions with chlorine. In complete combustion, an alkane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. In a substitution reaction, one atom or group of atoms is replaced by another atom or group of atoms. For alkanes, the substitution reaction with chlorine is a photochemical reaction. This means that ultraviolet or UV light provides the activation energy required for the reaction to occur. That is, light energy is needed to break the bonds in the chlorine molecules to start the reaction off. In this process, one hydrogen atom in the alkane is replaced by a chlorine atom. Here's the general reaction. Here is an example of monosubstitution using methane and chlorine. In this reaction, methane reacts with chlorine in the presence of UV light. A chlorine atom substitutes one hydrogen atom in methane, forming chloromethane and releasing hydrogen chloride. Moving on to alkenes, alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons, which means they contain at least one double carbon-carbon covalent bond. They are hydrocarbons, so they contain only carbon and hydrogen. This double bond makes them more reactive than alkanes. Because the double bond in alkenes can break, allowing new atoms to join. Now let's look at the manufacture of alkenes and hydrogen, also known as the cracking process. Alkenes are made by a process called cracking. Cracking is done by heating large alkanes to break them down into smaller alkenes, alkanes and hydrogen. This process is carried out using a high temperature and a catalyst. So why is cracking done? Cracking is important because it breaks large, less useful alkanes into smaller, more useful ones. These smaller hydrocarbons, like alkenes, are used as fuels and as raw materials for making plastics and other products. Next, the test to distinguish between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. The bromine test is used to distinguish between saturated hydrocarbons like alkanes and unsaturated hydrocarbons like alkenes. Alkenes react with aqueous bromine quickly, decolorizing the bromine water that is turns from orange to colorless, which confirms the presence of a double bond or unsaturation. Alkanes do not react with bromine under normal conditions, so the bromine water remains orange. So once again, alkanes do not react with bromine under normal conditions and the bromine water remains orange. Alkenes react with aqueous bromine quickly, decolorizes the bromine water that is turns from orange to colorless, 
and this confirms the presence of a double bond or unsaturation. Let's turn our attention to addition reactions of alkenes. In addition reactions, two reactants combine to form a single product. Alkenes have a double bond between two carbon atoms. In addition reactions, this double bond breaks, allowing new atoms or groups of atoms to join the molecule. This creates a new compound. Only one product is formed in such reactions. Since the double bond breaks during the reaction, please remember the product of each reaction will not contain a carbon-carbon double bond. Only one product is formed in such reactions. Here are examples of alkenes undergoing addition reactions. So with bromine, the reaction of alkenes with bromine is the same as the test to distinguish between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons, which we just discussed. Alkenes react with bromine to form dibromoalkanes. This is the example with ethene. Ethene reacts with bromine to form 1,2-dibromoethane. Remember, it turns from orange to colorless. Alkenes react with hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst forming alkanes. Example, ethene reacts with hydrogen to form ethane. So, if propane reacts with hydrogen, it forms propane, while butene reacts with hydrogen to form butane, and so forth. Alkenes react with steam in the presence of an acid catalyst producing alcohols. Now, as you all know, steam is water in its vapor or gaseous form. So, an example with ethene will look like this. Ethene reacts with steam to form ethanol. The water splits into H and OH. Next, alcohols. All alcohols contain the OH functional group and their names end with all. Ethanol is an alcohol. Ethanol can be made in two ways. Fermentation of glucose and addition of steam to ethene. Ethanol can be made by the fermentation of aqueous glucose. Here are the conditions required for this reaction to occur. Temperature of 25 to 35 degrees Celsius, yeast and no oxygen, that is anaerobic conditions. The yeast converts glucose, a sugar, into ethanol and carbon dioxide through fermentation. The other way to make ethanol is addition of steam to ethene. We covered this before in alkenes. Remember, ethene reacts with steam to form ethanol. The conditions required for this reaction to occur are temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, Pressure of 6,000 kilopascals or 60 atmospheres and an acid catalyst such as phosphoric acid. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the manufacture of ethanol by these two methods? Let's take a look. For fermentation of glucose, the advantages are it uses readily available renewable resources can be done at low temperatures, that is 25 to 35 degrees Celsius, and normal atmospheric pressure, so it's not so expensive. The disadvantages are, it's a slower process and not continuous, that is, requires a new batch when the yeast dies. It produces dilute ethanol, which needs further purification. For addition of steam to ethene, the advantages are it's a faster and more efficient process. 
it's a continuous process. The disadvantages are it depends on non-renewable resources that is ethene from crude oil. So this is unsustainable and contributes to environmental issues. And it requires high temperature and pressure, making it expensive. Now we shall describe the combustion of ethanol. In simple terms, combustion is the burning of a substance. Ethanol combusts in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water, releasing energy in the form of heat. This is why ethanol is used as a fuel. The combustion reaction is as follows. Next, let's look at the uses of ethanol as a solvent and as a fuel. Ethanol is a good solvent. It dissolves many substances that do not dissolve in water. It is used in products like perfumes. Ethanol is used as a fuel in cars and it burns cleanly, producing less carbon dioxide compared to fossil fuels. That concludes part 5 of topic 11, Organic Chemistry. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here is a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye.